But honestly, of all the ridiculous articles I read this week, and there were a lot of them, there were a lot of them, this article, honestly, is one of the most absurd, dishonest things I've ever read. And I've read a lot of absurd, dishonest things, but this might be the, the number one ludicrous thing I've ever read. And I hope you guys have eaten. I hope you're sitting down because this one's going to hit you hard. <laughs> so Jonathan Chait, who is, I mean, if you know like the digital media landscape, if you know like who writes, Jonathan Chait honestly is like on the Mount Rushmore of neoliberal lazy thinkers. He loves the establishment. He hates progressives. He loves, loves the status quo that pays him so well. Honestly, New York Magazine, who he writes for, is trying to unionize, and he's basically called the workers trying to unionize at New York Magazine ungrateful. So this is who Jonathan Chait is, if you don't know. Matt Taibbi, who I like a lot, and by the way, I'm going to be interviewing Matt Taibbi this coming week, and we're going to air that next Sunday. Matt Taibbi of Rolling Stone, uh, we're going to interview him. Um, he has gone after Jonathan Chait on the online all the time, and I love it. Absolutely love it. So Jonathan Chait writes, why the Bernie movement must crush Beto O'Rourke. The first skirmish of the 2020 Democratic primary, a wave of attacks on Beto O'Rourke by supporters of Bernie Sanders, took almost everybody by surprise. <laughs> on the outside, it looks like one of those unscrutable, personality-driven online spats that characterize the Twitter error. But the feud is neither petty nor personal nor irrational. It's the first shot in a war that may well continue for the next year and a half. So right out of the, bay, right out of the gate, he's, it's just propaganda. There, there, there was no attack on Beto O'Rourke, and I did a video on this earlier this week. This is all made up garbage. There's no attack on Beto O'Rourke. Bernie Sanders isn't unleashing anyone to attack Beto O'Rourke. David Sirota wrote a piece that went through Beto O'Rourke's voting record, and because his voting record is not progressive, because his voting record is, frankly, kind of Republican and conservative in a lot of ways, uh, Sam, in the live chat, is from Houston, and Sam and I were talking during the primary, where excuse me, during, uh, yes, the primary in Texas and the general in Texas. And people like Sam, who could speak for herself in the live chat, had to bite their, bite their tongue because, I mean, he's running against Ted Cruz. I mean, on a state level, I am more, on a state level, I am more open to voting for someone that I don't necessarily, that doesn't exactly get my heart burning if he or she is running against someone like Ted Cruz. Call it lesser of two evils if you want. If I lived in Texas, I would have voted for Beto O'Rourke over Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz is a disease. Ted Cruz is a dangerous individual. I wouldn't vote that way if it were for president, but on a state level, I would. But Sam was saying during the primary, Beto is a fraud. He's not progressive at all. He's a corporate hack. This is what she was telling me. And she would have voted for him anyway if it meant getting Ted Cruz out of office. And I really can't blame her. I think Ted Cruz is that dangerous. And you're talking about a state election, not the presidency. This notion that David Sirota, I mean, I like David Sirota a lot. There was no attack. David Sirota basically wrote the equivalent. He wrote the equivalent of a C-SPAN article. He just went through Beto O'Rourke's voting record. There was no attack. I haven't, honestly, I haven't seen one Progressive Bernie Sanders supporters online attack Beto O'Rourke for anything other than his record. And you know what that's called? Uh, a free country. Beto O'Rourke was, what do they call it? A public servant. His record is, what do they call it? Available for scrutiny. But because the near attendance of the world, because the New York Times of the world, they don't want you to look at their record because they know the record is the status quo. His record is pro-status quo. 
they don't want you to look at the record. They want to do a little reverse psychology and say, oh, Bernie people are scared. They're scared. And as a result, they're attacking him because they're scared of how popular he is. Let me tell you something. And you could mark this down and I will be happy to have egg on my face. He lies and said that uh, Bernie Sanders people are attacking Beto O'Rourke. They're not. Sam just explained the whole thing to you. Uh, Jonathan Chait says, I have opinions about the parties involved in this conflict that are not difficult to guess. But my aim in this article is not to persuade readers of the merits of my preferences, but instead to provide a descriptive account of an important conflict that I believe is being widely misunderstood. What are you, fucking writing an article or a book report? Get to the point. Indeed, I think the online warriors of the Bernie movement are getting too little credit and their mainstream liberal antagonists would benefit from a better understanding, better understanding of their motives and thinking. Oh, let's see what he thinks your motives and thinking are. The Sanders partisans who are attacking O'Rourke, like Zaid Jelani, David Sirota, Branko Marshitik, Elizabeth Bruneg. I don't know. I haven't read anything from Branko Marsetic. Uh, the stuff I have read from Zaid, David Sirota, Elizabeth Bruneg were not attacks at all. They were just simple journalism stating his record. Uh, are not representative of Sanders voters as a whole. Yes, they are. <laughs> this distinction is the key to deciphering the whole episode. Sanders attracts the intense support of a small left-wing intellectual vanguard who sees American politics in fundamentally different terms than most Americans, most Democrats do. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. I'm sorry to do this to you folks, but I really have to debunk this stuff. I have to. I have to debunk it. This, this is propaganda. First of all, Bernie Sanders won 13 million votes. Frankly, I think he won more than 13 million votes, but I think there was voter, fraud, uh, voter suppression and election fraud. That's what I believe. I think Bernie Sanders won way more than 13 million votes. And I am paying attention, but I'm also multitasking. So he says it's a small vanguard Bernie Sanders, it's just like, you know, Bernie Sanders supporters, according to this guy, are like those losers at the high school dance that can't get anyone to dance with them. So they just like hang out in a circle in the corner. I was one of them, by the way. Nobody wanted to dance with me, even though I have good dance moves. But back in the day, nobody wanted to dance with me. So a small vanguard, a small vanguard. Um, apparently, these people can't do math because by the polls, I keep having to say this, Bernie Sanders is the most popular politician in the United States of America, or more accurately, the United Corporations of America. Bernie Sanders, number one. When he says that his policies are not supported, what did he say? When he says Bernie Sanders' policies are not supported, a fundamentally different terms they see American politics in fundamentally different terms than most Democrats do. Um, let's see. Yeah, Bernie Sanders out of step with the majority of Americans. 70% want Medicare for all. 60% want tuition-free public colleges. 58% want $15 minimum wage. 72% expand Social Security. 57% break up the big banks. 64% legalize marijuana. 65% jobs guarantee. Uh, no, not Warren, not Warren Gunnell's fault. He probably couldn't fit all this in a tweet. Warren Gunnell's, by the way, is a uh, advisor to Bernie Sanders' uh, Senate office. He's been with him for a while. Let's add, uh, I think, 80-something percent want a Green New Deal to that. So what was that? Bernie Sanders is... Uh, Sanders attracts the intense support of a small left-wing intellectual vanguard who sees American politics in a fundamentally different terms than most Democrats do. Um, I don't think so. I don't think so. Because that's 70%. That's all Americans. And Democrats, it polls even higher. Medicare for All is polling in the 80s for, for Democrats. 60% all Americans want 60% of Americans want free public college. It's higher among Democrats. 58% of Americans, minimum wage, $15, higher among Democrats. All of these, higher 
among Democrats. So they're lying to you. These people, and by the way, to me, to me, it's worse, if you're gonna lie, I could deal with people like Jonathan Chait and the New York Times and the Washington Post who are just lazy. I, I, I don't, I, I would criticize them, but I, I, I could deal with them if they're just lazy and they're not looking up the data and they're not looking up the facts. But all of these people, they know the data. They know the, the public support. They know the popularity among Democrats. They're intentionally lying to their readers. And you know what happens? <laughs> David says Jonathan Shea needs to be thrown into the gulag. You know what happens? These pieces from the New York Times, the New York Magazine, the Washington Post, uh, BuzzFeed, the Daily Beast, all of this corporate nonsense, it then gets picked up by CNN, MSNBC, and it's all one. It, it, it's just like a domino or a hamster wheel. It starts on one peg and then it goes to the next. And this is all propaganda. So when you hear, when you hear that the greatest threat to the American people is people being brainwashed by posts on Facebook or Twitter from Russia. No, 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 no. That's not the brainwashing going on. That's not the brainwashing going on. $4,700, $4,700 of ads on Facebook is not the brainwashing you have to worry about. It's this coordinated corporate media, frankly, militaristic campaign. And it's not, by the way, it's not really about Bernie Sanders. If it was somebody else, they'd be doing the same thing. It's about they don't want the proletariat to keep waking up because there's a sleeping giant in America and Bernie Sanders and his movement began, it, began with Occupy. I think Bernie Sanders picked that up. And now the movement behind Bernie Sanders, they are waking up. And you know what? They're pissed off. This guy, Jonathan Chait, should be fired. He should be fired because he's... It, this is one of the most dishonest articles I've ever read. And I've read a lot of dishonest articles. <laughs> Bernie Sanders, small left-wing intellectual vanguard? What? Is this guy an idiot? The progressive movement is now the majority in this country. The policies that the progressive movement prescribe are now have majority support in this country because of Bernie Sanders. A small left-wing intellectual vanguard. Oh, well, you wait till that small left-wing intellectual vanguard comes knocking on your door, Jonathan Chait. I don't mean literally, but, oh, this is a massive, massive army. It's not a small vanguard. Sanders labels himself as a socialist and frames his rhetoric in Marxian class terms, which sets him apart from other Democrats. Even progressives like Elizabeth Warren call herself a capitalist to my bones. Socialists, at least those who aren't willing to settle for the incremental advances traditionally held out by liberal Democrats as their only option, change that to corrupt Democrats as their only option. See Sanders' presidential candidacy as uniquely compelling. The struggle between Sanders and other Democrats strikes them as far more significant than the contest between the non-socialist Democrats and the Republicans. The voters who pulled the lever for Sanders, by contrast, are ideologically indistinguishable from the rest of the party. Oh, my God. Indistinguishable, he says, from the rest of the party. Among the minority of voters who identify as very liberal, the most left-wing choice Sanders and Clinton performed about equally. In 2000, Sanders, Sanders voters actually had more conservative views on economic inequality. <laughs> oh, my God. And changes to Social Security. By the way, the two things he links to... Don't show that at all. But this is something that Hillary Clinton and her supporters tried to put out there. We're not, there's not that much of a difference between Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton. They agree on the majority of issues. No, they don't. Hillary Clinton was for a $12 minimum wage. Bernie Sanders was for $15. The only reason Bernie's $15 is now a thing is because of the fight for 15 and Bernie Sanders, not Hillary Clinton, not Barack Obama, and not the Democratic Party. The only reason, the only reason 
that Hillary Clinton was not for Medicare for all. Bernie Sanders was for Medicare for all. Hillary Clinton was not for free public college. Bernie Sanders was for free public college. Hillary Clinton was not for ending private prisons. Bernie Sanders was, is. I mean, these are not small, like, little slight differences at all. These are mega, mega major differences.